Hey everybody and welcome back to Fun King Garage. This is part two of the Hot Rod Power Tour Saga and uh, today we are hopefully going to have the whole story wrapped up. On the end of this video there's also going to be a slideshow of all the photos that were taken. Xander took a ton of photos um, through the whole thing. Uh, some of them were shown in the first video and uh, some of them not so if you want to look for your car you can wait till the end of the video or jump ahead, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you didn't watch the first part of this, uh, I'll put a card up here so that you can see that video. I'll tell you it is long, but it's a, it's a great story and you kind of need to hear it to understand this one. So I won't recap because you can go watch that video. So we left you as we departed on Tuesday, which was day two. We departed the hotel and headed out on the road to South Carolina. And we were on the road for approximately an hour when we decided to go ahead and stop for gas. And we, we waited that long. Like we had plenty of fuel, but we waited that long just to be out of Atlanta because it's a nightmare. It sucks so bad. Atlanta is just a nightmare. If you live there, I don't know how. It just... Oof. Anyway, so I already we don't like you if you live there. <laughs> we stopped at a uh, we stopped at a at a gas station to fuel up, and shut the car off. Got out, pumped the gas. And when I got in to start it, nothing. No click, no no nothing. So when I got this car originally, it had a problem with the ignition switch where if the steering wheel wasn't in the full up tilt position, it wouldn't start, like it wouldn't even try. And so I immediately thought that my repair had gone bad and so I put the steering wheel down and tried it, nope. Got out, I was, I was checking connections to make sure all the connections were tight, as you remember. We just replaced the starter, like not two hours before that. Um, so I got back in and I bumped the key a couple more times and the engine started to kick over. And a couple more times and it started. And I said to Xander, I said, well, one of two things is going to happen. It'll never ever do that again or it'll just never ever start again. And, uh, and we said, well, from here on, we're not shutting it off till we get there. We're just, we're going to, if we have to stop for fuel, we'll fuel up with it running. We're just, we're going. Uh, we drove three more hours to get to my sister's house over by Augusta and um, pulled up in front of her house. I had to drop some stuff off and I said to Xander, I, I asked him, I said, do you think I should turn it off? And he said to me, I don't remember. I just he said, <laughs> it's your choice. You decide. I said, I don't care, you idiot. Uh, Let me get out of this stupid car and stretch my legs. <laughs> so I opted to go ahead and shut it off. I figured if it was going to fail, that would be the place to fail, as opposed to somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Uh, shut it off. We did what we had to do. Nobody was home. Uh, my sister was actually out of town on business. But I go back. I get in the car to leave. Turn the key and nothing. We spent 40 minutes trying to diagnose the issue to get it to go and, and just couldn't get anything out of it. I could jump the solenoid and spin the starter, but it wouldn't engage the Bendex. It just, it, it just wasn't going to happen. So I had actually, uh, I don't remember if I texted my wife or if I called her, but I said, uh, we're done. It's, it's over. We're, we're coming home. Because uh, like at this point, at this point in the day, um, it was, at that point, we probably had close to two hours or maybe an hour and 45 minutes to be at the next venue. And we were an hour and a half away, not by route, but by getting on the interstate and driving like normal people. Um, and so, like, I had a bunch of contingency plans through this whole thing, like, if I needed to, uh, we were going to stash the car to mini storage and rent a car, rent a U-Haul truck. It didn't matter. Like, I had backup plans. The problem was is we had already spent all of our spare time that morning putting the starter in. We were out of time. Technically, we had two problems in the same day. We were out of spare time. Uh, so I kind of just, that's it. We're done. And then I look over at the driveway, and here sits my sister's car. And she's not using it because she's not even in the state. And so I called her and oh, I sent her a text. I'm like, can you call me? And she's like, oh, about 10 minutes. I'm like, please just call me. I need you to call me. And so she calls me and I said, 
my car is dead in front of your house and we got to go and your car is just sitting here not doing anything. Do you mind if I take it? And she's like, no, take it. So we're literally throwing the stuff from the Corvette into the back of her Nissan Kicks. The Camelback fell onto the ground. Like I threw it a little too hard. It fell. And we're actually using your phone to record this right now. Yeah, whatever. I'd have left you behind. But, uh... You yeah. did. You had to come back and get me. <laughs> you were in such a hurry. So we weren't even sure. Like, I mean, we were taking stuff that we we didn't need. And I think we needed some stuff we didn't take. It, But it didn't matter. We just, like, we even took the tool bag. But we didn't really have a need for the tool bag. It was just kind of like in case somebody else needed it. But regardless, by the point that we were getting in the car to leave, I don't even know if I want to tell the story about the fact that I couldn't find the start button in that car. It's too late now. If you don't, if you don't mention it, now it's embarrassing. So, and I'm going to make fun of it. I'm so it was, push fun. Button, it was push button start. And you know, they're always up here by the, by the dash or by the console or the column. No, nope, not this one. It was down in the control or in the center console and it had like hair bands covering it up and I thought I was going to have to Google to find out where the dang start button was, but either way, we got the car started. We had one and a half hours to make it to South Carolina to get punched in. Now, what I didn't know was really we would have been fine even if we were late. I didn't realize that you just, you punch yourself in. As long as they don't pack the table up, you're fine. Uh, but we're an hour and a half away. And we have an hour and a half to get there. So instead of taking the route, I, I recalculated the route to take all the back roads of Mexico. And we did 90 the entire way. Now this, this I don't know if you even know what a Nissan Kicks is. 90 is the max that thing could go. Yeah, it, it had, I think, like a 2.4 liter engine. And it had a hard time getting out of its own way. And it was just pretty much hold the gas to the floor. The whole way. Uh, but we did make it. Um, in fact, like when we got there, we didn't know, we had no idea where to punch in, even though it said right on the, right on the credentials. Uh, Sandra pointed that out later. But um, uh, I, I said, hey, look, you idiot. It <laughs> says right there. I randomly picked these three guys that were standing there just, just chatting. I just, I walked up to them to ask them. Well, it turns out that it was Bill, the guy that, we met at our hotel the night we came in on the tow truck. And uh, so he was like, oh, yeah, you go over there, whatever. So we punched in. We walked around there just for like, what, 10 minutes, if even that. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was already leaving, and they were already packing everything up. So we just said, let's go to the hotel and get some sleep, and we'll head out in the morning. So, again, that was Tuesday. So we were back on the road, unfortunately not in the Corvette. The Corvette was was sitting. Oh, we did, I got a call, I think we were at dinner, and I got a message from my brother-in-law. It had been a few hours at that point yeah. that uh, he was able to start the car and pull it up into the driveway. And, and he's like, the car's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, that told me right there it was heat soak. So the, the solenoid apparently was heat soaking, and that's I mean, it's hot under that hood when you run that long. I mean, it gets really hot under there. So, that night at the hotel, like, it was really bothering me. And Xander kept telling me to put on my big boy pants and shut up about it. But it was really bothering me that I had done so much work on that car. So many days dedicated to that car. 50 solid days of working on it for it for it to only make it through one venue. And I actually contemplated, we were laying, you know, like we were in bed that night at the hotel and I thought I could get up in the morning. No, in fact, it was the next morning I thought about it because I was awake at like 5 a.m. I thought I could leave, leave him sleeping, drive back to get the car and make it back before we needed to be on the road and we would be in the Corvette. Knowing then that it would have to have a couple couple of hours to cool down after, after heat soaked and uh, I was literally this close and then I thought that's just really dumb because it could it could be something bigger and it could leave us stranded I, I, so I didn't want to take the chance uh, so we did finish the trip out in the Nissan Kicks I didn't go back and get the Corvette 
Uh, I didn't calm down about it until I realized it really wasn't my fault that it was bad auto parts. So we had a failed starter. We got a, a new starter, <coughs> got it installed with the help from Rich, and then that starter gave us problems, and there was nothing we could do about it. I mean, it was completely outside of our, our control. So um, don't buy CarQuest parts. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you. I had to because I didn't know where else to go. There was no other, <coughs> no other starters in the area. That was it. That was the only one. Um, don't buy CarQuest parts. I know I won't. Ever again. Ever. Ever. Unless I have to. <laughs> so Wednesday we were headed to Rockingham. And the, the drive, I won't say was overly spectacular, but it was, it was nice. Was that the day that we stopped to get the more Hot Wheels and they were all sold out? No, we no, had Hot Wheels that no, day. we had Hot Wheels. Because we didn't give any out the day before. Yeah. So, um, you did get to do some driving that day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when that guy almost uh, plowed into us head on. And hey, that's, that's when I discovered it, my hatred for Corvette. Oh, you got to tell the Corvette did, story. So. So I was following this Camaro. Can, can I preface the story first? Because, I guess, yeah. Because, because again... If you're just going to cut me off like that while I'm telling my story. Well... Sure, go ahead. I don't, I don't care. I just have, tell the story for me. I huh? want to paint the picture of the fact that we're no longer in a hot rod. We no longer have a hot rod power tour banner on the car. We didn't even have the driven stickers on there yet. We had no hot rod anything on the outside of the car. We were driving a normie car. And we were behind... I don't know, six or seven hot rods. Yeah. At, at that time, no, it was just it was just a Corvette and the van. No, there was multiple cars ahead of us that we way, were following. Way, way farther, but the van was going slow. Oh, okay. So, all right. So we're following we're following the Camaro and the and the van. And then it's going it's going smoothly for a while, and then this freaking Corvette come comes in, c cuts in front of me, and then starts going like ten under the speed limit. Yeah, we were clipping along at a pretty good rate. Um, I mean, not like we weren't doing 100 or anything, but we were probably doing five over the speed limit, which, you know, for a bunch of old hot rods is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then this guy in a, I would say it was a 90s Corvette. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just kind of just, just kind of moved in the line, which, okay, I understand. Like, <coughs> we're in a line of hot rods. This guy wants to be in the line of hot rods. Probably didn't even realize we were with the power tour. And then all of a sudden we're further back and further back and further back. So I told Xander, I said, just pack it up. Let's go home. No, that's not what I said. What did I tell you? You told me to pass him. I said, go around him. And I would have too. I was so close. I was, I was right up on I, I was. I was passing him. And then this, this idiot, this freaking guy, this big bozo who... who who I would say other things about him, but then you get terminated on YouTube, <laughs> and so he starts speeding up while I'm in the midst of passing the guy. Yeah. And so I go back behind them, give him a little bit of sign language. I just I was not having a fun time. This with guy, guy, this guy was probably he had probably slowed down 15 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and like we were just all of a sudden dragging back, and the rest of the cars were leaving, and of course I'm like, well, what? Why? Why would this guy do that? We were we were. Like, we were going along fine, and then he just wants us to slow down. So, and we're in the left lane when all of yeah. this is happening. So Xander goes over to the right lane to go around him, and he's, mm, and all of a sudden we're doing like 80. And this guy is speeding up so that we can't get around him. And it was just like. This guy didn't want to get past mm -hmm. the Nissan kicks. Yeah, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want his Corvette to get passed by a kicks. So then Xander's like, I don't like Corvette people anymore. And so, and then when we got to the venue, I found him and keyed his car. No, <laughs> no, 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 that's not how we were all. Uh, but then that's not long way. after that, <laughs> the, uh, and if you were on, on the power tour, you might know exactly where this corner was, but like the GPS was telling us to turn on this dead end. Which apparently used to be the road, yeah, you, and then they built a gas be. station, and now you have to go past the gas station. Um, 
and so we were in the we were in the suicide lane and there's a car coming the other way so we're waiting to turn and the, a guy comes out to pass that guy and is now heading at us head on and he was booking and ended up going all the way out into the oncoming lane to go around us and then back in and then uh, and then there was 50 million people in the parking lot and it was making me nervous so I made Xander give up the driver's seat <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. So, uh, otherwise, it was uh, it was a good drive over. Uh, when we got there, they parked us way way out in the parking lot, and we had we had come in right behind a guy that we stayed at the hotel with. Quality and no quality whatsoever. Uh, but uh, and so jokingly, I said to him, I said, "What's your secret?" And he goes, "What?" And I said, "Well, we were at the hotel with you. We left before you. We passed you." twice on the way here and yet you still got here before us I, I don't understand like I don't have any idea and he had overheated and had to wait on the side of the road for his car to cool down at some point apparently but uh but his wife had said I believe it was his wife she had said uh we don't want to park way out here let's let's just drive and see if we can find people are leaving there's got to be closer spots and she was she was right like we ended up moving way way up uh, so Rockingham, you have to walk up over the bank of the track, and uh, in we went and walked around and looked at cars and uh, seen some cool Miatas. There was a Miata with a small block Ford in it, which is the first time I've seen a, a Ford small block in a, in a Miata, and got to talk to the owner of that car. That was pretty cool. And then, of course, we, you know, we punched in and all that stuff. Well, the way that Rockingham was set up, they had... They were letting everybody in one way and out another way. So the line to leave, the line of cars was like really long. So we actually started to walk down the line of cars as they were leaving. So it was like we were walking against the parade. So we were getting to see everybody. And uh, lo and behold, we run into Jamie and his friends. Uh, you guys remember Jamie from the first episode. If not, you know, go back and watch it. Anyway, <laughs> so we, we chit-chatted with him for a bit. Ended up walking through, uh, talked to a, talked to a, a I'm going to call him a kid because everybody's a kid to me, uh, who had a pacer, which I thought was pretty awesome. Uh, always have a love for the pacer. And then, uh, I don't know, we stayed for a little while and then decided we had seen everything inside the venue and went back out over the bank. And I said to Xander, I said, I don't want to walk this whole parking lot. It was a huge parking area. So I said, let's, let's go get the car. <coughs> and we'll, we'll drive around and see stuff. And so we're driving, and lo and behold, <coughs> the sticker van. I was so excited to find the sticker van. I had seen them post on Facebook, and uh, I said to Xander, I said, we got to go. I got to know what the story is on the sticker van. So we went and talked to them and got to hear the story. And, and then, of course, I asked if I could put a sticker on the van. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the highlight of my day, getting to put a sticker on the sticker van. So uh, so we continued to drive through the parking lot, met Rich from D-Boss Garage, which I actually kind of, I felt like I was encroaching on them because, like, they had a grill and they were grilling food and stuff. And I thought, wow, you know, like, I'm kind of encroaching or whatever. And then come to find out later, he had actually put out an invite on Instagram, you know, stop on by. But it was cool getting to meet him. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, after we drove through the parking lot, off we went again to our hotel. Uh, another quality in. A little bit more quality than the last one, but horrible smell. Horrible smell. Yeah, but it was a different smell. Variety. Right, it was more of a chemically smell. The other one just smelled like an old hotel. Uh, but, uh, was that the night we went to... Oh, yeah, that was the night we went to Pizza Hut. <laughs> It had to have been. That went to been Tuesday. I went to been in, in, because we left out of Rockingham and ended up driving back into South Carolina for the hotel. Like it was 40 minutes away. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. So quick side story. We're sitting in the Pizza Hut and Xander posts to Instagram that, uh, that he's on Hot Rod Power Tour. And uh, he gets a, uh, 
he gets a, a, a DM from a, a guy that we go to church with who follows him on Instagram and sa and he says, uh, oh, you're on power tour. What are you driving? <laughs> and so Xander said, well, we were driving a 74 Corvette and now uh, we're driving a Nissan Kicks, you know. So then there's a, a delay, a little pause. And all of a sudden a message comes back in and goes, wait a minute, is Fun King your dad? <laughs> And I, I thought, because this, this person, uh, Matt, I'm not going to give away his last name, but Matt uh, follows me on Instagram and, uh, and also watches me on YouTube. <laughs> and so Xander's like, yeah, like we thought he was kidding, but turns out, no, he had actually started following the YouTube channel based on YouTube suggestion, and uh, which that means the algorithm's working. Uh, and had no idea that we go to church together. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. That made my day. Um, we've since, because you know, obviously we've been home now, uh, we've since seen him at church, and I went up and introduced myself as Glenn from Fun King Garage. <laughs> and uh, Xander gave him some stickers. So that was pretty cool. That was a, that was a really cool experience the the pizza hut not so much no that was not so much of a great experience no, that, that's usually how the pizza huts went on that trip yeah there was like um four employees and none of them were actually working it was it was bad um but there was nothing else in that town like there was nothing they did have a cookout but it was, it was uh it was one of the drive through ones drive through only yeah so so we ended up at the pizza hut but uh so next morning would be thursday that would be. Uh, again, we're back in South Carolina because the hotel was 40 minutes away, uh, but off to uh, Concord, we went, and that was the Z-Max Raceway. Super nice track. Super nice. Yes. Um, we ended up parking way out in the and we probably could have moved a little closer, but, but we didn't. Um, and walking through the parking lot, checking everything out, there was a guy who had a... Uh, older, I want to say it was a fastback, Mustang, bright orange, and he had a hit and run that morning. Somebody had hit the front of his car and took off. And so he was letting everybody sign the hood so that he could hang it on the wall when he got home. So uh, I signed it and then later found out that he was letting people put stickers on it. So I put a, a Fun King sticker on there. Uh, but uh, we uh, got into the venue. Uh, yeah, there was actually a tunnel under the track, which is the first time I've ever seen a tunnel under a under a, a dragway. But I mean, you can't do that in Florida. It, it would be a swim through instead of a walk through. Yep. But uh, but it was it was really nice. We did end up meeting up with Rich and Christy again there, and which I think was the first time I had met them. Yeah. That would have been. You're right, because we were standing. We were standing at the punch in table because they were headed that way. So we were standing at the punch table, and people kept coming up and asking us questions, which proves the fact that if you look official, you can get away with anything you want. Like we're we're dressed like this with Fun King hats on, but Xander had the camera, you know, like the the full full camera rig, and like people were coming up asking us where stuff was and like. You know, like, where's the closest bathroom? I don't know. I've been peed in three days. Um, <laughs> it's a power tour, man. You don't pee. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah. So Xander finally got to meet Rich and Christy. And we, we walked around. They wanted to go over and see Derek from Vice Grip Garage, which he was, like, way. <laughs> he, was, he was back in South Carolina. It felt like it. Holy cow, is he a long way away. But, uh but we went over there, but unfortunately he was packing up to leave. Um, so, so they didn't get an opportunity to meet him. Uh, I did take that opportunity to slip him my business card, though, and tell him that uh, me garage is su garage. So, uh, you know, just in case he ever needs a facility in this area. But uh, otherwise, we just kind of walked that show. Uh, I was looking from Isaac. Uh, for Isaac from It'll Be uh, it'll be Fine, uh, also Cars and Camera, and thought we seen him. I thought he was there in his hearse. He wasn't. <coughs> so we were chasing a hearse for no reason. 
but it's okay because that hearse disappeared. It vanished. There's no. Like we literally watched him get into the exit line, and he was still a long, long way from the exit line. By the time we walked over there, that hearse was gone. So at that point, we didn't know it wasn't Isaac. But whatever. I'll find you, Isaac. I'll find you. That's weird. Um, <laughs> no, I told him I, I I commented on one of his videos that I missed him and told him maybe next time. Uh, so that that was that. Uh, leaving out of there. The GPS took us through the Hendrix Motorsport Complex. Mm -hmm. Even though all the signs said no exit, no exit, no exit, there's an exit. So we got to drive right through, go right by their research and development facility. It was cool. It was really cool to drive through there. Uh, stopped at a Walmart and got some more Hot Wheel cars that night. Yep. Because we had given out all the Hot Wheels and couldn't get any the day before. <coughs> <coughs> and then uh, to our hotel. Which was a Hampton Inn. It was. Hampton Inn. Uh, probably the nicest Hampton Inn we've ever stayed at. It, it was like brand new. It was so nice. Day five. Which was the run from, from Concord to Bristol. Absolutely the nicest route out of all of them. Because it was all windy through the mountains. And it really made me sad that we didn't have the Corvette at that point. Because it was some really great windy roads uh we did stop at one point uh to see if we could assist somebody that was overheating and xander took an opportunity to snap a bunch of pictures as the cars were coming around this bend and you'll see them in the slideshow if you watch through the slideshow at the end and uh they were they, they like they were pretty awesome photos and when we got back in the car he said to me he said Everybody was giving me thumbs up and waving at me and stuff. And I said, you're on the side of the road wearing a black t-shirt, holding a professional level camera, and we're driving a small white SUV, which is exactly how the Motor Trend guys were. They were all wearing black t-shirts. They were in a small <laughs> white SUV, and they had a professional gray camera. So I'm thinking everybody thought he was from Motor Trend. So if you're looking for Motor Trend photo, they're not... They were taken by Xander. You're not getting those, pal. You're not getting them from Motor Trend. Five they'll, bucks each. They'll be at the end of this video. So uh, so we made it into Bristol. We ended up catching up with, with Rich and Christy. Almost right, right. We were almost there. We couldn't have been, what, 20 minutes out. Yeah. We were literally 30 minutes behind them the whole day. They would send me updates. Oh, you know, like there's some traffic. Yep, we just hit the traffic. Uh, we just rolled into Tennessee, and then like all of a sudden we're in Tennessee, and I'm like, we got to be right behind you. But there was so much traffic. There was no alternate routes. There was no nothing. There was so much traffic. Like you were just kind of stuck with the way it was. And they had stopped for fuel, which we didn't have to do. Like we stopped and put fuel in that kicks once a day just for good measure. But I think we could have gone two days on that car Probably. without fuel. But uh, So that was a benefit as well. But uh, we did finally catch up with them, so we rolled into Bristol together. Uh, went in into the, into the venue, immediately went looking for the punch tent, which was no longer next to the stage. It was in the back. Uh, and somebody, somebody told us that. They're like, oh, you got to go way to the back. But it wasn't really that far. It, was, it wasn't that far. It was no. like a football field. Like maybe a hundred yards, and uh, so that's when they gave us these beauties. Well, these beauties too, frame not included. No, frame sold separately. But uh, yeah, that's when we got these, and yeah, I mean it was just exciting just to to carry that around. So you know we took some photos, and then uh, hung out for a little bit. Uh, um, Xander and I went to meet up with Jamie and his family and took some photos with those guys and then uh, caught back up with Rich. Rich is like nine and a half feet tall. Mm -hmm. So like you could just scan out into the crowd and there's Rich. So he was really easy to find afterwards. Um, we find him and Christy had actually gone up to, they were, they were giving stuff away like extra license plates and stuff. So she had gotten us an extra license plate, and she got us each one, didn't she? She gave us two. She had to have gotten us two because we have three. I don't. I think only. Or did she one. just get one extra, and now we have two? 
Whatever. Doesn't matter. We, no, have, we have we have three, I think. Okay, then she got us two. There was only one in the I bag. I don't remember. This is going to be back. Either before. way, thanks, Christy. We appreciate it. Um, but, uh, so yeah, we hung out for a little bit. <coughs> and then said our goodbyes and parted ways. Um, just because we knew that we had to make it all the way back to Augusta. Uh, our plan was to leave out of Bristol and go to Pigeon Forge and spend s some time in Pigeon Forge on Saturday, but because of having to borrow the car and knowing that I had to go fix the Corvette to get home, uh, we opted to skip all of that, and we left out of Bristol at about 4.30 and just, just beelined it straight back to Augusta to my sister's house, got some sleep, I got up the next morning, I called the auto parts store as soon as they opened, and uh, I had them verify that they had the, the part, like I had them go put their eyeballs on it, and we drove over, it was like, what, 35 minutes away, yeah, it was so and so the first two hours of the day was spent going to pick up parts, uh, I got a heat blanket for the starter just to double protect it, we got some breakfast, uh, washed the car and fueled the car, <coughs> my sister's so that we weren't giving it back dirty and empty. And then uh, went back and Xander and I put the starter in the no, car. I put the starter in the car. You sat there. <coughs> if you say so. Uh, you threw beer cans at me telling me to go fast. It was, it was a little bit easier this time to put the starter in because uh, my brother-in-law didn't have a floor jack. So uh, we were able to lift the car up a little bit. That made it a lot easier. And I had the right bolts, thanks to Rich. Uh, so, uh, at that point, it was uh, packing our car up. And we were back on the road at 11.30. And we were home by 7 p.m. Yep. And, and that was with a stop. There's a town in, in, in Georgia called uh, Glenville. And, uh, I mean, you got to stop in a town with such a cool name like Glenville. And it's a town that we used to pass through all the time when we'd go to visit my parents in Georgia. And, and we always ate at the McDonald's there. So Xander and I went to that McDonald's. So we sat down. That was the first time we shut the car off mm -hmm. after it was hot with the new starter. Shut it off, and it started right back up. So I was like, yeah, you know. Um, but we had lunch and still made it home. I mean, we made it home by, by 7. The only issue really that we had going home was we did run into some rain here in Florida and with that car not having air conditioning, you put the windows up and it got really hot and in And the windows don't fully go up either. Well, right, you gotta pop the door open a little bit to get the window all the way up and then there's still holes in the in the <laughs> weather seal. And, love that car. But, uh, but the T-tops didn't leak. Xander did have a drip coming down but it was actually coming in from the passenger side window and across and dripping down. So the, the seals I put in on the T-top, top shelf, top shelf. Uh, so that was good. I mean, it was a good trip. Absolutely exhausted by the time we got home. Um, but uh, I don't even think, did we unload the car even that night? Yeah, we had to have, we had to have taken everything out of the car Friday night. Yeah. And then put it away in the garage. But, uh, and I actually haven't, I haven't touched it now I took it out, I took it out, I did something to it the first week we were home, because it's been two weeks now since we've been home, um, but I haven't touched it this week because I hurt my back and I haven't been in the garage, but, <coughs> <coughs> but I'll get back on it and then find it a new home. So if you're interested in the 1974 Corvette, uh, definitely hit me up. All my contact information is provided in the description of this video, and uh Maybe we can work out a deal. Otherwise, it was a fantastic trip. Yep. Uh, the talk all the way, I don't even i don't even know if it didn't start until we were on our way home. It probably started before that, but we had already started talking about next year. Uh, Xander wants a Mazda Miata. What years? Um, I think it was 89 to 97. Whatever the first gen is. Okay, so he wants a first gen, the one with the pop-up headlights. It's got to have the pop-up headlights. Yeah, so if I you know anybody that's got one else. or if you got one and uh, you're looking to part with it um, as cheaply as possible. 
preferably for maybe a hamburger, <laughs> um, maybe a Hot Wheels cars, or both. <laughs> I'd be willing to do both. Uh, but yeah, if you if you know one or if you got one, hit us up we'll with that even as well. Throw in a sweet and sour sauce packet, <laughs> just to be just to be nice. Oh, and before you reach out, no, I won't trade the Corvette for a Miata. Yes, he will. He will trade the Corvette no. uh, happily, and you will still get the sweet and sour sauce back. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I don't. Uh, I don't think anything else super exciting happened. No. Uh, Xander complained every time that we hit a, a roundabout. Yep. Doesn't make sense. Uh, a traffic they, circle. Why did they put those there? And when we just were in Georgia, just make just make it a four way stop. It does not need to be around. When we were in Georgia it's coming home, than it's worth. when we were in Georgia coming home, there was a traffic circle literally in the middle of nowhere. Doesn't make sense. It so I drove around it and around it. <laughs> uh, but uh, but no, so it was a good trip. We're definitely looking forward to next year. Uh, Xander says if he can get his Miata. He'd like to take that, so it'll probably be a two-car. I can't see myself riding in a Miata for a whole week. It's a fun time, man. Yeah, well, I mean, you're not going to fit in it either. You get your own Miata. Get my own Miata? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm still looking for a car for next year. I haven't made a decision. I've got some options. But it starts with an ad. <laughs> the headlights pop up. <laughs> so, but definitely watch the channel for more of that. Um so I guess I'm going to say now, uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Uh, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It helps me immensely, and uh, it helps the channel grow. About 98% of my audience isn't subscribed, and that doesn't help me. I need those subscriptions to grow. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to me. Uh, we do thank you for watching, though. Um, more content coming. I think the next video coming up is going to be Fumman's content. And uh, otherwise, we're going to leave you with this slideshow. If you see your car in there and you want a copy of the photo, email me and tell me what, what photo it is. And I can email you the photos. I don't, I don't mind sharing them. He'll charge us. So don't email him. Yeah. Email me. And uh, again, all, all I'll of my charge contact... charge you just for emailing me. All of my contact information is down in the description. But uh, so enjoy these photos.